Good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Malash. I'm the very proud superintendent of the Cherry Hill Public School District. I'm thrilled that you were able to join me today for the online lunch with the superintendent. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome my good friend and colleague, Dr. Kirk Rickensrud. Uh, Dr. Rickensrud is joining me today to talk about very special accolades that we've received as a school district, uh, and they go into some detail about them as well. So recently, the Cherry Hill Public Schools were identified as a 2017 New Jersey State District of Character, uh, which is a phenomenal award. Uh, we are one of two school districts in the state of New Jersey this year to receive that accolade. Um, I've asked Dr. Rickensrud to join me today to talk about the process uh, for the identification uh, for the school district to be recognized as a district of character, what that looks like. Uh, Dr. Rickensrud is also the principal currently of the Thomas Paine Elementary School, uh, and previously he was the principal uh, at the John Carusi Middle School. Um, Dr. Rickensrud, as, a, as an administrator in the district, has a long and successful history uh, with implementation of character education and with highlighting the success that our students and that our staff have had. Um, so Dr. Rickensrud, if you could just start with kind of let us know, uh, or let the folks know, what's this mean? What's it mean that we are a state district of character? Um, first off, it's very exciting as a community member. One of the uh, things that I've always promoted within my sons, as we all do with our kids, my sons are at East. They, one of them is a freshman, the other one's a junior. They went through Beck and Horace Mann. And one of the things I think as parents and as educators and community members, uh, that we all can uh, agree on is that a foundation of a uh, foundation of character in anything we do beyond academics, math, language, arts, and literacy, that we want our kids to come out with being a good person. And how do you do that? You have to have a foundation of character built into your communities, built into the school systems, built into the curriculum, and built into kind of how we treat each other, how we treat kids, how we recognize kids. So interesting enough, doing a little bit of history, um, it all started at Horace Mann when uh, Mr. Sweeney and Ms. Nina Kemp's working on creating a character education program for the school and they had community members. Ms. Bixler, who was my neighbor, was also a part of it as well. And they went to a thing called the 11 Principles Source Book done by the National School of Character Education. It's a character education partnership. And there are 11 standards by which you are held accountable to creating a viable and consistent character education program. Doctor, let me just interrupt you. Mr. Sweeney was the principal at Horace Mann yes. at the time. Uh, Ms. Kemps was the librarian media specialist. Yes. And who was the... the Ms. Bixler was a PTA slash sub-secretary at the time. Thank you. And her kids went through Cherry Hill. Thank you. They live on Sunnybrook Road next to me. Anyway, but since then, I just I want to do it before I get into more, is many of us don't know the outstanding work that has been done around these standards in the schools across the district. For example, in 2008, Woodcrest Elementary School was designated as state school of character. And then 2007 and 2008, Rosa International received state school of character awards. 2011, Thomas Paine, Richard Stockton in 2012, John Carusi, 2010 and 2011, were state schools of character. James Johnson, 2010. Horace Mann, in 2008. Henry Beck Middle School, 2011. Cherry Hill High School West, 2013. And Cherry Hill Alternative School, 2013. All of those schools went through the application process around the 11 principles, which is an amazing amount of studying yourselves as state school of characters. Since then, so so Dr. Rickson, just talk a little bit about that. So to be named a state school of character, they have, you, you talk about the 11 principal source mm -hmm. book, which comes from the character education uh, partnership. So so what's that look like? Because it is an incredible process for the schools to go through. What, what do they actually do? What's that involve? The first thing is you study yourselves. Like uh, what are your core values? How it's connected to the district? And then you go through the 11 principles. Like the first principle is, um, talks about your mission and vision. Is it tied to the character ed? And if, it, and if it's tied to your character education program, how are those programs teaching kids your core values? For example, I'll just talk about Thomas Paine. Um, we have respect, responsibility, resiliency, and active citizenship. So if that's what our core values are under on the principle one, we have to then look at the things that we do, such as I do positive meetings as a principal, and I talk about what it means, what it looks like, 
and uh, different, for example, role models in our lives. Uh, in February, the conversation was African-American role models as it applied to our core values and then instill that into the kids and to ask them to act upon those things. And that all goes back to our vision and, and mission, which has respect, responsibility, resiliency, and uh, active citizenship. The other things that you look at in different principles, how you bring in parents, how you bring in your community, how are they engaged in your mission, vision, and values? How are you asking them to help instill those values with you as a school? And then you uh, are graded on that standard. Um, how is the PTA involved in promoting events at night that are around your core values? Um, how do you give students voice is principle 11. How do you engage kids into these core values? Because adults, we can say these are our core values, but if they don't believe it, believe in them and act on them and then take them uh, ownership of the intrinsic value of that, you look at those things, if they're not doing, to put in place what you can do. For example, some schools have um, principal's luncheons or in focus groups or the superintendent has uh, leadership uh, from both high schools on the Board of Ed. He also has focus groups because you give students a voice about what's going on in our schools. Things like, do you feel safe? Uh, what are your values in your school? What are the character education things that you're involved in? Then you look at principle 10, which asks you how you do recess, how you do lunch, how high school do sports, what values are you instilling into our children as they play sports, like sportsmanship. And uh, one of the big things in the district is the anti-athletes uh, against an uh, bullying. Sure. And that's sports connected to character education and hopefully their leaders to other kids in schools and stuff like that. So you're studying yourselves in those, in those under those principles and you're trying to engage the community, the parents, the students, the staff, and leadership, and the district to say, are we a viable character education or character school? And once you do the application and you get um, designated as a state school of character, they actually rate yourself, you rate yourself and tell your story, which is a long process. Then you have an evaluator that comes in and they have focus groups with just kids, administrators, parents, and they tour the school and they then decide whether you have met the standards of the 11 principles and you're kind of doing what you're saying. Then you become a state school character. If you score high enough or they feel that you're one of the exemplars for all schools that are looked across the nation, then they send in another team to then look at what you're doing in a more critical way, such as looking at your data. For example, we send a survey out to the kids that specifically asked the kids. The district did that for all fifth graders, eighth graders, and 11th graders that one, uh, a few years ago in 2014 that asked basically the simple question, do you feel bullied in school, right? Do you feel that teachers um, give you a voice in school? Do you feel that you're listened to? Do you feel that you understand the core values of your school? And then from there, they send out evaluators to look at those things and then analyze them in a, in a more um, discreet way and then you can get a national school character designation okay so that transitions us then from the state school right or state district um, uh, designation so this year uh, we were identified trail school, school district was identified as a state district of character mm -hmm. we also had two schools uh, in the district identified as state schools of character this year uh, Bret Hart Elementary School yes. and a Russell Knight Elementary School mm -hmm. were identified as state uh, schools of character and we had two schools Sharp Elementary School and Kilmer Elementary School that were identified as honorable mention schools this year. Yes. So then what's the next step in the process? So now you as you talked about them coming out to do visits uh, and a higher level of reflection in the different pieces that were there. So what happens next? Is this where we go at the, at the national level? Yeah this is where we're at the national level. So uh, Knight and Bret Hart were designated as state schools of character but they scored high enough in other words they uh, the state school evaluator, evaluators felt that they were doing things that are on a national scale. Right. So now they're sending a new team to see whether they could be a national school character. In other words, they meet the threshold of some of the best schools throughout the United States. So they are getting a visit on in March. Uh, Russell Knight will be visited by two individuals from the Character Education Partnership on May 15th. March. March 15th, and then Bret Hart the next day and they spend a half a day talking to kids, parents, administrators, and they tour the school without any administrator around or teacher, and they ask kids specific questions. How do you feel? Do you feel safe? What do you do? They sit and eat lunch. They watch the buses, how they, how they load and unload. 
They go and talk to ed assistants, the paraprofessionals, they sit in class, and then they evaluate whether the school is truly a national exemplar. So Bret Hart and Russell Knight are in that process because they moved over. Uh, you mentioned Sharp and Kilmer, they're honorable mention, meaning they didn't meet the threshold for the state school evaluator, so they won't go on. Now our district has, because I just mentioned all the state school characters, then we combined all our efforts as a district, and we sent in an application for them to look at, are we close to being a state school uh, character as a district? And we were, but we were so good in our application process and the evaluation, they're sending out the national team to look at our entire district to designate it whether we are an exemplar, not only for the state of New Jersey, but for all districts in around the nation. That's excellent. Um, so Dr. Richard, talk a little bit about, I know you have listed on here the, the national schools of character, the schools that have received that designation mm -hmm. in the past. John Carusi was considered a national school of character in 2011, Richard Stockton in 2012, Henry Beck in 2013, Cherry Hole Alternative School in 2014, Thomas Payne in 2015, John Carusi received a redesignation in 2016 and Clara Barton was also considered a national school character in 2016. So with all those states and all those nationals, we're pretty much there as a district. So the next logical step is for us to apply as a district and see what our, our, our policies, our procedures, and how we interact as a community, as a district, as, uh, to see if we're nationally recognized. We're state recognized, but we want to be nationally recognized. Because it would be great for our kids to graduate, no matter what school you're there as a from a district that is nationally recognized for their character. That's great. And then we also have this year, uh, Rosa Middle School and Stockton Elementary School are also up for consideration as being redesignated as national schools of character as well. So March 15th, 16th, and 17th, we're expecting the visit from the folks from the national organization. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking forward to that. We'll have um, people throughout the district will be involved. Uh, some of our PK folks will be involved. Some people from the community will be involved uh, as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and Dr. Riggenstrud, uh, I'm grateful. So Dr. Riggenstrud, the reason that I asked him to come in and spend some time with us and talk about it um, is Dr. Rick is the one that, that led the charge with this. Um, he accepted that responsibility last spring when we had spent some time talking about what we wanted to do, really to spearhead the work on, on the application. He had a committee of folks who were involved, including Dr. Chapman, uh, who chairs our Cultural Efficiency Committee uh, in the district, and they worked together. Uh, also, a special thank you to Ms. Mona Noyes, um, who is a longtime member of our educational community um, and at times has been on the Board of Education. Um, she ran home and school and PTA at High School West. Mrs. Noyes actually introduced project graduation to Cherry Hill. Yes. Uh, she worked for the district in character education uh, and continues to provide uh, advisement for us uh, in terms of what goes on. Dr. Rick, anything else that you'd like to, to share with folks before you depart? Uh, all I want to say is I'm very excited about it. It's been one of the great experiences to look at what we do and uh, it will we'll only improve. It doesn't stop. The redesignation means you get uh, you get designated as a national school and then you have to reapply because you have to continue. It's not it's not an end and stop. It is just a beginning. So it's great. That's great. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you. I appreciate thank you coming out. Absolutely. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. So folks, as, as we continue on um, with the online lunch, if you have questions, Please submit questions. You can submit them online. Uh, email them to publicinformation uh, at chclc.org. Uh, Mrs. Wilson, who's our public information officer, will share the questions with me. You can also share them if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, you can share them directly through the chat feature uh, that's on there. And Mrs. Wilson is moderating that as well. Um, Dr. Riggins-Rude, in his uh, comments, uh, talked about one of the activities uh, involving Black History Month uh, at Payne Elementary School. Today's a special day in American history. Um, today is the birthday of W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, a great American scholar and orator uh, and a leader for us all to look back on uh, and the impact that he has had on American history uh, on this date as we go through. A uh, couple of other little pieces of information um, behind me. Again, one of the highlights uh, of the work that I do here in the office um, and, the, you know, here in the district is a, it's a thrill to welcome students uh, from different schools in our district and have their art displayed uh, on the wall. Um, tonight I'll be welcoming students from the Horace Mann Elementary School uh, whose artwork is displayed behind me. Again, it's amazing for us to be able to share the work of the children, um, to have it here in the office, 
to see what's to see what the kids do. Uh, and I tell the kids and their and their families when they come and visit me, you know, to do a little gallery walk, and I ask them about their artwork. That the adults who work in this building, that work in the administration building, they always take the time to come down as the artwork changes over to see what's done. Uh, we get to talk about what do they think was the inspiration behind the art, and then I get to hear from the mouths of the artists themselves. Uh, so thank you to the Horace Mann community, uh, especially the Horace Mann artists. Uh, who allow us to share their work uh, on the walls behind me. Special thank you to the Cherry Hill Police Department. Uh, last night, Wednesday, um, we hosted a, a presentation at Crucy Middle School. Um, Officer Renee Houlihan, um, Detective um, Paul Hafner, um, and Sergeant Keith Mahan uh, joined us in the Crucy Cafeteria uh, for a presentation on internet safety. Um, we welcomed a group of parents from throughout the community uh, who had students here in our schools as well as in some of the private schools to receive the presentation about internet safety. Uh, we've talked about it in here last month. I was, well, I was pleased to have uh, Chief Monaghan with me and one of the things that we talked about, please parents, um, familiarize yourself on internet safety. Familiarize yourself uh, on what your children are doing online, whether it's on the computers that you may have at home or an iPad or a tablet of some sort uh, and on their phones. One of the things the chief and I mentioned uh, last month and I'll continue to say is tell your children, do not take pictures, inappropriate pictures of themselves or anybody else. Do not share those pictures. If you have a concern, if your child receives an inappropriate picture, please delete it from the phone, contact the police, or contact the building principal to notify them. We need to make sure as a community that we're doing all that we can to keep our kids safe. Ask the questions. Parents, I know at times it can be an uncomfortable conversation, it can be a challenge to have with your children, but please have it, have that conversation. We need to make sure that our children are not taking pictures of themselves or of others and then sharing them. There are real world consequences that come along with that. So again, I'm, I'm grateful to the men and women of the police department, um, especially last night, uh, Sergeant Mahan, Detective Hafner, uh, and Officer Houlihan, um, who spent quite a bit of time with us uh, in, at Carusi uh, for their presentation. Last night, we also, earlier in the evening, um, Mrs. Wellington, who's the Director of People Services and the Supervisors for our Special Education Department, um, hosted some parents in the, in the Media Center at Rosa to talk about some changes uh, in some of the special ed programs at Rosa Middle School and at Beck Middle School. Um, there will be a second evening if parents uh, have questions about the placement of programs that will occur at Beck on March the 2nd at 6.30 p.m. So that's next Thursday. Folks, if you were unable to attend last night's meeting, you have questions about the, the movement in programs between Beck and Rosa Middle School, there's a second evening, which is Thursday, March the 2nd, and it'll be at 6.30 p.m. in the Media Center uh, at Beck. Mrs. Wethington and the, and the supervisors and Mr. Dawson, the principal of Beck, uh, would be happy to welcome you that evening. If you are unable to attend the meeting and you have questions, contact us. You can always contact uh, us through public information. You can email us directly. Uh, in fact, in a regular day or, or during the course of the week, if you have questions, on our website, um, there's questions. There's a question uh, and answer section uh, under the community tab in the very far right hand um, side of our web page. Um, so if you have questions, please submit them to us. Uh, I was very excited earlier this morning. Um, I was over at, at High School West uh, and I had a chance to walk through um, their Black History Living Museum. Um, incredible uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, Mrs. Nelson, um, who's the student advocate at High School West, uh, and a group of students and, and other adults put together uh, a display. Um, and it was a living history museum uh, where children researched um, uh, important figures um, in African American and black history um, and then embodied these folks uh, in presentations. The level of detail, uh, the level of research, and the information that these children were able to share was absolutely incredible. Uh, Mrs. Nelson also had a community member uh, who spoke uh, and talked about his experience and, and his background. Um, you know, as a, as, a, as a person in the United States. Um, so I was thrilled to see the first person point of view uh, and to see what these children were able to share uh, and the work that they did. So thank you to Mrs. Nelson, uh, to Dr. Morton, to the folks at, at High School West. In meeting with uh, folks in the building this morning here at Malberg, I had a chance to speak with the registration ladies. Um, we are starting upon a very busy time in registration. Very excited because kindergarten registration begins on March the 2nd. Kindergarten registration begins on March the 2nd. Um, a couple of details for everyone. Uh, in order to register your child for kindergarten, first and foremost, you must live in Cherry Hill. Uh, secondly, your child must be five years old by October 1st, 2017 in order to register. Registration takes place here at Malberg uh, and is scheduled according to the elementary school uh, that the child will attend. 
Dates for each school are posted online on our district website. If you have a specific question, you can certainly call the elementary school in the neighborhood where you live or where your child will attend, uh, and you can certainly talk to the principal there. Or if you have additional questions, contact us here uh, at the administration building. But again, child must be five by October 1st of 2017 uh, in order to register for kindergarten. The Earth Festival, Sustainable Cherry Hill. Um, uh, the, the annual Earth Festival will take place on April the 29th. All 19 of our schools uh, will have activities and displays uh, that will be at the Earth Festival. It takes place at Croft Farm. Uh, it's a wonderful activity. If you've not had the opportunity to participate and to visit the Earth Festival, I encourage you to please mark your calendar for April 29th. Um, I believe it's the eighth annual, the eighth, either the eighth or ninth, but I believe it's the eighth annual uh, Earth Festival here in Cherry Hill. Sustainable Cherry Hill, um, an incredible number of volunteers uh, put on an incredible display at Croft Farm. It's a great opportunity. They have a bike ride uh, that leads up to it. Um, there's, again, information online. If you go to the Sustainable Cherry Hills website, uh, there are additional details. But please, plan to come out on, on Saturday, April the 29th. You can see the work that our students um, and our parent volunteers and our staff members have put together uh, as each one of our 19 schools will have a display uh, at the Earth Festival. Dancing with the Cherry Hill Stars. This is the 10th anniversary of Dancing with the Cherry Hill Stars. I will not be dancing this year and dancing with the Cherry Hill Stars. I did dance in the first year. Uh, I have been invited in the past, but I am unable to dance this year, uh, which is probably a, a good thing for everybody that's involved. Um, I will be there this year. I'll be participating as a judge. Uh, it's one of my favorite community events every year, Dancing with the Cherry Hill Stars. Uh, the Cherry Hill Education Foundation, uh, who sponsors Dancing with the Stars, um, provides an, an opportunity um, for our community to come together. This year's event is on April the 30th. It's a Sunday evening on April the 30th, and it takes place in the auditorium at High School West. Tickets are on sale. If you visit the Cherry Hill Education Foundation's website, you can see to purchase tickets, uh, and you can see the list of dancers, uh, and there'll be special, special activities uh, as the 10th anniversary. As a school district, we're incredibly grateful to the men and to the women and to the students, to the businesses, to the community members who volunteer their time and their talents and their energies, not just in Dancing with the Stars, but throughout the year. The Cherry Hill Education Foundation has raised and donated more than $1 million uh, that has benefited our children uh, throughout the school district. So again, April 30th, um, check out online Cherry Hill Education Foundation uh, where you can purchase your tickets uh, for the Dancing with the Stars, the 10th anniversary. So some questions that have come through, uh, some that came through earlier today um, and some that have come through as we've been online uh, here this morning. So the first question was, will Rosa ever be changed to a quote sending school rather than quote an open enrollment school? And the second part of the question was, why was it set up as an open enrollment school in the first place? Um, so good question. So Rosa Middle School is one of three middle schools that we have here in Cherry Hill. Uh, Rosa Middle School opened up in 1999 uh, as a magnet school. Um, so the planning for Rosa Middle School, prior to Rosa's opening, um, the building where Rosa, the, Rosa, the, the building um, housed the administration uh, offices. Prior to the administration offices being housed there in the mid-1990s, uh, it had been a, a third middle school in Cherry Hill. It was Heritage Middle School. At one time, there was Beck Middle School, Heritage Middle School, uh, and, and Carusi, which had been Brainerd. Um, each of the schools housed seventh and eighth grade. With declining enrollment in the late 1980s and into the early 1990s, they had closed the third middle school. For a number of years, there were seventh and eighth graders were located at Beck Middle School and at Carusi Middle School. Towards the late 1990s, following some, some looks at the organization in the district, programs that we had, the determination was made that they wanted to move the sixth grade out of the elementary schools. The only way to move the sixth grade out of the elementary schools at that time was to reopen a third middle school. Because at the time they did not want to redistrict, they did not want to, to, to have a, a great deal of, of change or upheaval um, to the sending boundaries for Carusi uh, and for Beck, um, they chose to open Rosa as a magnet middle school, providing the choice for parents of fifth grade students to submit the child's name uh, for consideration to attend Rosa. So as a, middle, as a magnet middle school, it was open uh, using the foundation of the premise of the middle years program, which is part of the International Baccalaureate program. Um, so it has been a magnet school since then. Uh, and the way that it occurs, uh, and this is timely because the open enrollment request, if you would like to have, if you have a, a fifth grade child and you would like to have the consideration for your fifth grade child to attend ROSA for the 2017-2018 academic year, tomorrow, um, February 24th, is the last day to submit the application. Uh, so if you're going to do that, it needs to be at Malberg by tomorrow, February 24th. Um, but it's still a, it's a, it's a, an, an open enrollment school and a magnet school. 
So what goes through is, is children from all 12 of the elementary schools um, submit their names, um, you know, and, and parents fill out an application, submit their names, uh, and then a selection process, if one is needed, uh, is gone through so that because we have specific enrollment uh, of the number of children that can attend. Um, so again, if you have a fifth grade student and you want your child to be considered to attend ROSA by 4 p.m. tomorrow, uh, which is Friday the 24th, uh, uh, Friday the 24th of February, uh, you need to submit your application at the Malberg Administration Building. Um, when you arrive at Malberg, uh, you see our receptionist at the front desk, Ms. Raxana Stewart, who is fantastic, uh, and she will direct you and guide you in terms of what you need to do. Um, so will ever be changed to ascending school? We always look at the configuration of our school district. You know, we currently have 19 schools, everything from an early childhood center to 12 elementaries, uh, two uh, regular sending neighborhood middle schools, Rosa is a magnet school and two comprehensive high schools as well as an alternative high school that's a smaller learning environment. As we look at our long-term goals and we're developing our Cherry Hill 2020 plan, we certainly are looking at the configuration of our schools. Um, will Rosa be a sending school? I, I don't have an answer for you as we sit here today, but certainly we always look at the configuration as to where the children are attending school and how we organize ourselves. Our current organization, the 19 schools, is the way that we are currently organized. Uh, it's not necessarily the best way, it's certainly not the only way, um, so we will certainly look at that. The second question is, there seems to be a lot of changes to park this year. Can you please explain about the graduation requirements uh, and where can I find more information? There are changes to park um, in, in a couple of ways. Uh, there's a major change within our school district in terms of the administration of park. Uh, the big change for us is at the high school level, we're going to be administering the park, the, the full administration of park, uh, within three days at the end of March and the beginning of April. Um, and that's a big change over doing it over the course of six weeks. The high school administrators and the high school staff and students and um, through PTA involvement and suggestions we're able to work out a schedule um, wherein uh, each of the regular administration of the test will be able to, will be able to take place in three days. Uh, in fact the three days of the park administration at the high school level students will be dis will be dismissed early from school at 11 at 12 12 40 12 40 12 50 at 12 50 p.m. Um, the students of the high school will be dismissed during the park administration. Um, bigger than that, you know, are the requirements for park. So because we are in, uh, this is just the, the, the third year, um, you know, of, of, the, of this type of administration of park, um, we are now hitting where graduation requirements kick in. So students who are currently freshmen in high school, the class of 2020, must sit for the park assessment. They must sit for the park assessment. They are still able by the state guidelines to achieve the state testing graduation requirement by using an alternative assessment, but they cannot use the alternative assessment unless they sit for the park, for the park assessment for the administration. So that's the class 2020, which is this year's freshman in high school, and then it applies to the middle school students going backwards as well. Um, so that's one of the biggest changes overall. There's a lot of information that we have on our website. Um, this is Wilson through the Public Information Office. Now, with the support of Ms. Holmgren and Ms. and Ms. Sadwin, have been sharing information each week about Park. Um, and there's a direct link online if you'd like a different additional information. If you have specific questions about the administration in your child's school, please contact the school. Always start with the teacher. Go to the principal. And we can certainly always support at the district level if you have additional questions uh, as it comes in. We have a question about the change, the changes that that were just recently um, shared with the elementary uh, school concerts, uh, the instrumental and the vocal concerts at the elementary level. So there's been an ongoing discussion um, at the elementary level about, about how we do our concerts, about developmental appropriateness for our students, how can we enhance uh, the elementary music program, and how can we enhance the music program overall throughout the district. One of the jewels in Cherry Hill is the music program um, that, that we have from our elementary level all the way up through the high school. Uh, in fact, we had a group, the orchestra from High School East, performed this past Monday at the Kennedy Center uh, down in Washington, which is an incredible experience. It's events such as those that we expect all of our children to be prepared for and to be ready for by the time they graduate from high school. So as we work backwards to what do we provide for our children, what does it look like at the elementary level? There's been ongoing discussion uh, with the elementary principals and the elementary music teachers about how can we best support our students, how can we put the best students and the best prepared students on stage to do the concerts. There's been questions and concerns about night concerts and conflicts and time, uh, the intensity for children to be able to present at night as opposed to be able to present during the day. 
So is it, and, and there's been different practices at different elementary schools. So the decision was made as a district um, at the elementary level to say, you know what, we're gonna move forward and we're gonna do our concerts, our music concerts during the course of the day. Uh, provide opportunity you know, for parents to be able to come in and see concerts during the day. Also looking at electronic opportunities, like we have this here, uh, to be able to live stream uh, or have recorded concerts so that people can see family members or extended families or friends to be able to see the concerts. And again, the intention is to provide students in a supporting environment the opportunity to be on stage, to present, and to play um, in a controlled and supportive environment during the course of the academic day. If you have a specific question about how the concerts are going to be handled at the elementary school where your child attends, please contact the, either your child's uh, music teacher, instrumental or vocal, or, or contact the building principal. I am sure they would be happy to have a conversation with you about how it's going to be addressed in each one of the elementary schools. There's a lot of exciting events that are coming up. Um, if you are a fan of swimming or you're a fan of an exciting competition, I encourage you this Saturday, uh, February the 25th, to travel to TCNJ, I believe 5.30 start time. Uh, our high school East boys swim team will be swimming for a state championship. Um, so TCNJ in the natatorium, um, go out and see our, our high school East boys um, swim in the state championship. Uh, there are continuing uh, winter sports uh, are wrapping up. Uh, at both the, the middle school level and the high school level. Um, there are still games that are left, state tournament games, state competitions. We have wrestlers from the high schools that are competing this weekend. Uh, we had a Rosa Middle School boys basketball team that went undefeated, uh, which is an incredible accomplishment. But I encourage you to go out um, and to support our athletes. Spring sports start next week. Spring sports start next week. And with the weather outside and you know with the, the warm weather, I, I went springy with my bow tie today. Um, Spring sports will be beginning. I encourage you to go online, look at the schedules, go out and support our student athletes. Go out and see what's going on at the middle schools uh, and at the high schools and see what the kids are doing. The spring musicals are coming up very quickly. Uh, Ragtime will be produced at High School East uh, and Sister Act will be produced at High School West. Our middle schools have shows that are coming up and we encourage you to go out uh, and to support these shows to go through. So there's a question that just came through and thank you for submitting through the, the YouTube channel. Um, regarding help for ESL students who have been placed out of the program or have tested out of the program and how are they helped with transition? It's a good question. Uh, one of the growing um, populations that we have in the Terrell School Districts are children who receive additional support uh, who are studying English as a second language. Um, so there are very specific guidelines about children who qualify to receive services under ESL, um, both to enter the program and then to exit the program. Uh, depending upon the level, whether it's elementary, middle, or high school, there are different types of supports that are put into place. Um, we provide training for our regular education teachers in sheltered English environments. Um, we have uh, literacy coaches at the elementary level. Uh, we have support teachers at the middle school and at the high school level. And we have guidance counselors at all three levels that can help to provide support uh, for the children in the, the classrooms. If there's a specific question or a specific issue with your child's experience or with a child's experience, um, please again, contact either the guidance counselor uh, or the building principal in the building. Um, our goal is to continue to provide support because just because a child um, demonstrated on a proficiency assessment that they no longer need to receive the ASL services does not necessarily mean they don't need the additional support on a daily basis to continue to be successful. Our goal is we help to guide children along the continuum of development and along the continuum of success is that every child is successful as we move forward. So it does not seem that we have any additional questions coming through. I do have a couple of special announcements and I have a couple of, of books to share. First, if you have time earlier on Saturday, I encourage you to go to Cherry Hill Library. They're having a chocolate bake-off and they need taste testers. So if you like chocolate, if you like things that are made with chocolate, go to see the Cherry Hill Library. If you have not been to the Cherry Hill Library recently, again, I encourage you to go up there, um, see Ms. Smann, uh, and see the folks at the library, see the incredible programs that they have going on. Look for their website, get on the website, the book sale, one of the book sales is coming up relatively soon. Uh, so go out and support the Cherry Hill Library. But if you like chocolate, this Saturday, two to four, uh, you would still have time to go to the library and see the chocolate bake off and still get up to, to Trenton State or the College of New Jersey to see the boys swim uh, on Saturday as well. A couple of books to share with you. So after the last luncheon, I want to thank Miss Marshall, uh, who lives here in town, who shared her book with me. Uh, one of our local authors, when she saw the books we went through, she shared her book. Miss Marshall, thank you for sharing it with me. I've gone through the book and I like it. An appropriate public speaker's guide to success in every situation. I am trying to take some of the suggestions that are in the book and apply it to what we're doing on a regular basis. Two other books to go through. Warriors Don't Cry, 
This is a book that we use in our middle schools with our students. Uh, it tells the story of the children in Little Rock who desegregated the high school. Uh, we had the opportunity in, the, in, in Cherry Hill when we celebrated the anniversary of the Brown versus the Board of Education decision to welcome Carlotta Lanier, uh, who was one of the Little Rock Nine. Um, this book tells the story um, from Melba Beals, Melba Patillo Beals' perspective about what went on. If you have not read Warriors Don't Cry, it's a great read. Our middle school students are reading it. I encourage you to pick it up and to read it. Another one that I just revisited. So John Kennedy is one of my favorite presidents for a lot of reasons as a former history teacher. Um, a great book, A Nation of Immigrants. Uh, if you have not read this book, again, prospectively, 50 years later, since uh, more than 50 years um, since President Kennedy was assassinated, interesting perspective and words to look up and words to follow through. Again, I encourage you, please register for our online newsletter that comes out every Friday. I'm very excited to share my letter each week and you get to see updates about what's going on within our school, within our district. Um, please register for that so that you can receive it. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook. Stay in touch with what's going on. Visit our website. There's an incredible amount of information that's on our website. All of our schools have their own website. Go through, see the information. And again, please come out and see us. Um, if you have additional questions, go to the online link um, in the community section on our webpage. Submit your question. We'll post questions and answers, uh, and we are grateful for the time that you that, that you have spent with us. If you have not downloaded our district app, there's a district app you can download through through the through iTunes uh, or through Android through the Play Store. Cherry Hill District app. It's free. It actually consolidates all the district information in one spot. You can choose what schools information you want to get, what calendars you want to be able to see, but it's a great place to, to see information. And while it's warm outside and I'm wearing a flowered tie, just remember we still are in the end of February. I'm hopeful that we will not have an additional uh, snow event, but we may. If you have questions about how that decision is made, again, please see online. We will not send announcements out after 1030 in the evening or before 530 in the morning. Uh, we do make a determination. Our consideration is always about the safety and security of the students. And we do wait as long as we possibly can to see what the weather is doing. Because while there's a lot of excitement online at times, there's a lot of excitement uh, on the news. We actually like to see what's actually happening with the weather. Stay in touch. If you have questions, ask us. If you have questions about the district, contact us. Look forward to seeing everyone. Take care.